Hey everybody, Terry White here and I'm hot off the stage at Max showing some really cool stuff in Photoshop. But I thought I'd take a moment to really show you more, show you the things I didn't get a chance to show during the keynote that are new in the new Photoshop beta as of this morning. You can go to your Creative Cloud app, you can install the beta, you can install it right alongside your regular Photoshop. They can coexist. You can always uninstall the beta if you don't want the beta anymore, and you can use the regular one for your production work. Let's go ahead and dive in. First and foremost, the image model has been in, in, improved for Firefly. So it's a new image model in Photoshop to give you better generations and higher quality. And we're gonna get into a couple of examples of that. Let's start off with one of my favorite new features, and that is something added to the contextual taskbar. So here I have my dog Pixel, I used him in the keynote. And uh, as you know, you can always select subject, that's great. But you'll notice there's a remove background, which is great, that's a one click remove background. So many people come to Photoshop every single day to remove the background of images. It does it non-destructively as a layer in the layers panel, or a mask in the layers panel, I should say. But more importantly, you notice there's two new buttons, import background, that's great if you already have a background you wanna use, but generate background is new. So if I do generate background and I wanna put um, pixel on the beach, we'll do summer day at the beach, and that way it will use the Firefly engine generative fill to figure out the angle, the perspective, the lighting, the shadows, and everything it needs to do to put a beach scene behind pixel. Let's check it out. And just like that, we get our beach. Now I get three to choose from, as always. Uh, that one's kind of messy. I like that one. I would either go with probably the first one or the last one. And again, if I don't like any of these, I can hit generate again. So that's a quick look at just remove background and the new generate background. Now let's move on to something that is in the regular Photoshop build. So this is not a beta feature. This is brand new as of today. And it's revolving around text and the new font panel. So I select this text for uh, Baker Street Market and I wanna go in now and I go to my font panel and it pops up, it looks kinda of similar. You'll notice the classes are now called out on the left-hand side. If we move the image over, we can see that as I hover over the fonts, uh, they show up, that's great, that's always been there, but what's new? Well, we've always had this More Fonts button, but the More Fonts button always took you to a website. Now when you click More Fonts, it no longer takes you out of Photoshop. You see every font available as an Adobe font, all you know the thousands of fonts that are here. You see all the classes, and you can then just go in. For example, I like futuristic fonts. I can then hover over these futuristic fonts and see what they look like, even though they're not loaded on my machine, even though I haven't synced them down. I can still preview them on Canvas, and I can even, if I like this one, I can click on it, and it just works. Everything happens behind the scenes, it syncs that font, and I've now got that font to use. So that's the new font panel that is in both the beta and that is in your release version. That's not something that you have to use the beta for. So if you just update your Photoshop, you'll get the new font panel. All right, let's go to the next one, a blank page. Oh my God, something that we're not used to seeing. Uh, at least not for me, I always start with a photo. But a lot of people start with a blank page and you notice in the contextual taskbar, there's a new generate image. It's also under the edit menu, generate image as well. So this is a beta feature and this allows you, you could have done this before, you could have selected the canvas and then use generative fill to fill it in, but generate image actually looks more like the Firefly website. So I can go in and I can type in a prompt. Uh, let's say, uh, since I'm you know, Lon doing London, let's do um, Tower, Tower Bridge, London. Uh, during golden hour. And I want the results to be a photo. And I even have the cool reference image and I can even go into the effects of how I want it to look. I can do all of that right here in Photoshop now. So a lot of those features you couldn't do without going to the Firefly website, they're now built into Photoshop. So uh, the new generate image is there either on a blank canvas from the contextual taskbar or just go up to the uh, to the edit menu and generate canvas, and here's my first result, my second result, and my third result. Now, if I kind of like the second result and I want to see more like it, 
Well, on the Firefly website, I could just choose Generate Similar. Now that option is here in Photoshop as well. So I hit the three dot menu and I can now generate similar for the first time built into uh, Photoshop. So that will take a look at this, this result and give me three new results that are similar to this one. And these all look great uh, using a new image model for Firefly and there it is. There's first result that's similar, second result that's similar, third result that's similar. And I'm really liking that third one, that's my favorite. So the new generate images here and the new generate similar. All right, uh, next up, and this is kind of a fun one. I have an image of me on stage uh, during the Photoshop World keynote, and I've selected my jacket because I kind of like purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors, and the lights on the background right now are purple, even though the background is not really that color. But I thought, oh, what would it look like if I had a purple blazer on? So I found a purple blazer. And now let's see what it would look like if I did that. So if I do generative fill, the feature in beta is now you can choose a reference image. Let's click it and let's choose the image. And I've got a folder here, reference images. I got that purple blazer in there that we just saw. That's what it looks like. And now let's go ahead and bring that in. Now, I don't have to give it a prompt because I basically I'm, I selected the area and I told it what to use. Now, I could give it a prompt in addition to the reference image. But in this case, I just wanted to interpret the reference image for my selected blazer. And let's see what we get using the new Firefly engine and the new image model and Firefly built in. And there we are. There's my first result, second result, third result. I kind of like the second one. And again, it's not matching it exactly. It's not a copy paste. It's just using it as a style reference for the blazer that I had selected. So it's kind of like, oh, his, his lapels were a little bit wider. So I'm going to make them a little wider. I saw something on that reference image that was in the on, on the lapel. Let me kind of put something there as well. And this is a great way to use reference image for, for when you can't describe a prompt exactly the way you want and you just want to show it. Just show me a picture. Show me an example of what you want. Oh, I got it. I'll generate something just like that. All right, now let's continue on. Let's go to the background of this image. Okay, let me do one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a nice big selection of this area here. And in that big area there, I'm just gonna use generative fill to generate something new. And you know, you've seen me do this prompt uh, probably a hundred times, toy robot, wearing sneakers, and I usually do taking a selfie, but we'll just do wearing sneakers and we'll generate it. Now, the reason I'm doing this, why, why am I generating something new here? And why am I using the same prompt? Because two things, number one, by using the same prompt over and over again, I get to test the image model and see how much better the image model's gotten over the years or over the year, I should say. And there's my toy robot. It even extended the podium for the robot to stand on. <laughs> I really like that one. And, uh, and, and kind of facing me because it looks like I'm talking to it. Great. Well, you'll notice on the variations now, there's a new button in the upper left-hand corner that new button basically says enhance detail. So this is a beta feature we're working on that enhances the quality of the result. So if you say, hey, I want a better quality result, just click the button. There's no menu option. There's no dialog box. You just click the button and you get a higher or higher in or higher resolution result um, that has more detail. So test that. Let us know how that works for people that said, hey, I want my generations to look better. All right, next up, and this is last but not least, there's a new brush in Photoshop. It's called the adjustment brush. And what is it? The adjustment brush, think of it as adjustment layers on a brush. We've had adjustment layers since Photoshop 4, like a long time ago. And now adjustment layers can also be just made easily with a brush. So if I uh, choose the brush in the contextual taskbar, I get to choose what kind of adjustment it's going to be. Same adjustments we've always had. I can choose exposure. And so now when I'm brushing this area down here on the sidewalk, it's lightening that area because that was the default and now they lighten or lighten the exposure. But notice what it did. It created a mask, an adjustment layer with a mask automatically. And now I can just go ahead and tone that down a bit if I don't want that to stand out as much or if I wanted it to stand out more. I can do whatever I need 
uh, to maybe even paint a light under a person uh, on stage uh, or as a stage light. So things like that I can do quickly and easily. And it just all kinds of op or all kinds of creative ideas come to mind when you think about this. So using the adjustment brush this time, I might want to go in and choose hue and saturation. And so I can just go ahead and paint right on this apple. They're all green. And that creates the layer right off the bat with the hue and saturation and the mask that I just painted. And now I can adjust the hue because I like red apples and give me a red apple just in that spot. And now if I paint anywhere else, I'm gonna get that same adjustment because I'm on the same layer and I'm doing the same mask. Now you can always come in and add a new adjustment so you get a new brush stroke. Uh, and that way you can do as many of these as you need to. And of course you'd zoom in, you'd make your brush bigger and smaller and you do a more detailed job. But this is giving you some creative control by giving you adjustment layers on a brush. All right, so that's a quick look at what's new in Photoshop Beta. Everything's new in Photoshop Beta that I just showed. The one thing that is in the release version is the new improved font panel, font browser. And go ahead and check out all of these things as of this morning. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.